all of you and uh, well we'd like to welcome all of you to MTV and today is a very significant day it happens to be the 14th of November 2015 on every year on the 14th of November there is a significance because it is the world's diabetes day uh, I know when you when you hear about diabetes it's not something good but we need to be very much aware about this so uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Mahen Vijay Surya, who's the uh, consultant physician who specializes in diabetes and also the director of the National Diabetes Center in Rajagiriya. And also not forgetting that he is the secretary of the Diabetes Association in Sri Lanka. A very good day to you, sir. Good day. Uh, well, uh, the 14th of November, what is the significance? They say it's a diabetes day. Yeah, uh, it was the day, the, the birth anniversary of the founder of insulin. And uh, we have been, uh, not celebrating, but commemorating this day from 1987 across the world, around 200 countries join us uh, in making this, uh, in making this a day of impact so that awareness and education is heightened all over the world about diabetes. All over the world. So I didn't know that it was uh, the day that insulin yeah. was invented. Yeah. So uh, now getting, getting on to diabetes, now we've been talking about diabetes, mm -hmm. but do we really have an idea what it actually is? Yes. Now the importance is that it is a illness or a condition which is uh, determined by elevated blood sugar levels in the body, which tend to harm most of the organs that the blood comes in contact with. So we have complications secondary to developing this illness, complications um, uh, uh, with respect to the heart, to the brain, to the eyes, feet, actually no part of the body is spared. So we respect this illness and we are trying our level best to reduce its incidence and prevalence because of the complications that people with diabetes have to face. Okay, now uh, doctor, you, you said uh, about the prevalence. Now, uh, it might be stabilizing, it might be increasing, but in, in my mind, it says that it, it seems to be increasing. Yes. What's happening in the yeah, world? We had a count, uh, actually it's a, it's a way of counting, but not person to person, 388 million in three uh, in 2014 now the latest figures from the uh, diabetes federation is 415 so you can see that uh, uh, it leaps and bounds in terms of millions Michael. it is increasing so actually in 1985 it was 50 million 1995 it was 150 million uh, 2005 it was 250 million oh. then in 2015 or 14 it became 388 now we are talking of 400 and these are numbers of people who are truly diabetic then there is a group called pre-diabetes which is on the way to becoming diabetic another 300 odd million and by the time we reach uh, 2030 35 we will cross a billion uh, mark so, well, we are certainly not in control. We are certainly not in control. So, wh what we need to do is, in order to be, con be in control, we need to know what diabetes is all about. How, how does it uh, endure? I mean, how does it get into your body? What are the, what are the factors, doctor? Yeah. Now, uh, this slide would show you that there is a collection of predisposing factors. It's not a one illness, one problem situation. It is not also due to an infection. Uh, it is a combination of genetics, fetal origins, that is how the baby develops in the mother's womb, the nutrition it gets, etc. Thirdly, after birth, what we do with ourselves, that is uh, the nutrition factor, the exercise factor, the weight control factor, and lastly, the mind plays a big role, which is really not very well understood yet, but uh, we know that stress is uh, the fourth member of this team. And the uh, increase in numbers that we just spoke about is most probably due to stress because that is the fastest moving changing item amongst this lot.
Well, talking about the mind, it's the most powerful tool. Yeah. And also, if your mind is not right, that means if you're under stress, so mm. you have a prevalence, you might be going towards diabetes. Mm. And uh, I've got this mm. slide right here, doctor. Mm. Uh, we've got a couple of slides, actually. So uh, it says, not as sweet as you think. Mm. I hope you get the picture. We'd like to get here. Here you go. I hope you get the picture. I mean, it's, it's uh, called the ginger man. Mm. Ginger, ginger man. But uh, he gingerbread seems man, yeah. Gingerbread man, and uh, he seems to be missing a leg. Not yeah. as sweet as you think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got more slides, and uh, getting back to it, doctor. Now, normally, what we think is uh, there, there's a particular age limit. Yeah. That's, that, that's what we think. Uh, you know, if you're diabetic, you know, you have to go beyond this particular age. But now yeah. things are changing, yes. or we have an yeah. understanding. Everything in the world is changing, including diabetes. Earlier, it was uh, over 40 condition and we pe people who were younger than that really didn't bother to get to know or come to terms with diabetes. Today we are seeing it in significant numbers under 30, under 20 and occasionally we see a child who is under 10. Oh. Now, so we are actually earlier there was a gap between 20 and 40. Under 20 we got an illness called diabetes type 1, which was due to, again, possibly a virus. That's a separate uh, entity. We can talk a little about it later. The type 2, which is the adult form, uh, started off around 40 and went to 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, doctor, now uh, we, we talked a lot about it, so uh, about diabetes, but still it's not enough. We need to know what the repercussions of diabetes as well. But before that, uh, what's the situation in Sri Lanka? You told about the yeah. situation in the world. So yeah. let's get into the situation in Sri Lanka. This is the situation in Sri Lanka. In 1990, when we did the first study, which was done in, by our group, we found that the, uh, the rural folk had diabetes to about the extent of 2%, the urban folk had up to 5%. Then when we, uh, some other doctors repeated the whole process of fact finding in 2000, the numbers had gone to 12% and in the urban sector and 2008, it had gone to 16%. So it is going up in leaps and bounds. The another problem is that the, even the rural folk are increasingly susceptible. Now you might ask me why. Exactly. Why? Because the greatest malefics is in the nutritional component and if they don't succumb to the desire of eating the wrong thing, the wrong thing is presented now from the uh, urban in the rural area. There is no rural village without the things that you should not consume. Exactly. So food plays a your major, nutrition. Major, it, major, it plays a major, major role. role. So uh, what should we do, doctor? So talking about this now, it seems like uh, we're we're getting the epidemic. I mean, mm. uh, the world is going on to billions, and Sri Lanka is also going on. We are uh, into millions. We are we into are, yeah. We are uh, two point three million diabetics, two point one million pre-diabetics. Total four point four million out of twenty. One or twenty-two Two million. So, so that, twenty that percent. A, that is a big percentage. Big percentage, and we are climbing. Uh, the the Southeast Asians and the Middle Easterners. They are the worst affected. You might ask me why. Okay, I will ask. Uh, uh, we've got more questions. I got more questions to ask from Dr. Mahan Vijay Surya. Uh, stay with us. We'll go into a small break, a quick break, and be right back. Don't go anywhere.